Good afternoon or evening, and thanks to the organizers for bringing us here. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to present is a way to approach uh, mobility from, from two different strategies, uh, always trying to, uh, to have the lithium industry as the principal proxy. Um, uh, our archaeological context for, for this approach uh, is based on the Eastern Mediterranean Peninsula, uh, basically on the region of Valencia and of the uh, Low Aragon region. Um, and it's based on the late Mesolithic, the period which goes from 7700 to 6700 BP, <coughs> pretty much, of course. And our main objectives are uh, to approach how uh, hunter-gatherers moved and how can that be expressed by the Lithic record in two methodologies, which will be on one hand, uh, how curiosity or, uh, uh, can express mobility or how diversity in uh, archaeological assemblages can express mobility. Uh, we uh, did a preliminary work on this last year in Maastricht, uh, where we, uh, let's say, we, we will lift it at some points. Uh, and now we try to bring that work farther. At Maastricht, we were more focused in Gothina Cave, and we'll see a map just in the next uh, figure. We're more focused on Gothina Cave, um, and um, we, could, we, we also noticed that we could find different results comparing older excavations to uh, modern excavations. We also found some possible biases that, were, that could be happening in our methodology, and uh, we tried to look for some possible measure which was not relative uh, to our sample, well, like a fixed measure of mobility uh, of, let's say, residential, the residential versus logistical camps. So this time what we did is we, we had a global focus. Uh, we adapted our methodology to uh, a, a reviewed sample. We assessed the causes for these biases, and we also concentrated on, on our specific context. This meaning that we, one of the things we had to do was to assess the differences between old and modern excavations. And also, we wanted to assess how <coughs> geographical or chronological variability could affect our sample and results. One of the first, well, this is the geographical frame. And one of the first uh, problems that we have is that we needed some data. And that data was not always accessible. That, uh, as a matter of fact, the original plan was to study 28 sites. And we had to reduce that to nine sites, because for all of the other sites, uh, we didn't have enough data to study them in the uh, standards that we needed. And this is because of many reasons. In one hand, some, some sites have not even been excavated. They just published, but some uh, surface collections, let's say. Some of the sites have been excavated, but not even published. Uh, some sites have been excavated, but the record uh, is, is not enough. And sometimes the information and the publications uh, doesn't have all of the conditions that we need. Uh, talking about what do we need in order to do this, uh, we need uh, a lithic industry uh, as uh, by class, the volume of the sites, and also we wanted to have the proposed function to see how our results uh, were, com were compared with the uh, function proposed by the original excavators of the site, so the consistency between these two things. So this is just uh, a statistical try of the first of the 16 sites where we see that outlier, which would be the site of mass climat, which could not be included in the accuracy versus expediency methodology because uh, it was, as we say, it was an outlier and it was, uh, well, we could just not include this site, but it could be included in the, in the other analysis. And we will have an, an explanation of why this could be later on. We'll go to that. So first, we assessed uh, this, uh, this issue by the curiosity versus expedi expediency. The rationale, which uh, well, Julian explained better uh, than I could before, uh, the, rationale, I the rationale is that due to the difficulties of transporting big amounts of raw material and function-specific camps are expected to present more curated assemblages. This implying that uh, higher uh, research frequencies regarding the, to the total volumetric density. Being more specific, shorter camps are, expended, are expected to present more curated assemblages, whereas long-term camps are represented by more expedient assemblages. Um, 
In order to perform this methodology, we were based on some uh, some older papers, like one uh, from Clark and Barton to 2017, where a, locked, uh, a linear model on a log twin scale was established, uh, and where we would compare the recharge frequencies against the lithic volumetric density. Um, the position of the sites and levels in the model is expected to show its relative degree of accuracy, and therefore allow, allowing us to explore their mobility roles. So this is the first comparison that we did. Uh, as we can see, that correlation does exist. Uh, we have a significant correlation, an inverse correlation. But if we look at the sites, uh, we can have some inconsistencies regarding previous knowledge. Um, I don't know if you can actually see pretty well the names of the site that we have here. For example, uh, we get on this site, supposed to be, um, according to this, it's supposed to be a long-term plan. And instead, we know because how the site is and um, where it is uh, that it's difficult. And actually, it was a, a, a long-term camp. Also, we have here the Nanet, an open-air, fairly big camp, uh, which we would, we would not expect it, expect it to be there. We believe that the reasons why this is happening is probably having to do uh, with the way in which we gather the volume information. Because we are consulting uh, the bibliography, we don't work. Evidently, we have not excavated all these sites. And sometimes the volume, we just have the, the, the area and the average depth, for example. And that's not reliable for, we, we know that the, that the depth is not always uh, uniform. <coughs> so we believe that can be one of the problems that we have. Also, um, we also uh, knew that there were differences between old and new excavations. In this case, we decided to take in the year 2000 as a turning point and comparing older versus newer excavations. We see that correlations increase, in fact, when we compare old sites between them and new sites between them, although we do not have statistical significance for new sites. And um, our sample is small, but this could be hinting that actually there is a, uh, a difference uh, for some reason with this. In the beginning, we thought that this dif that difference was, uh, was because of, uh, of, the, of the chips of the, of the lithic industry we thought that it would not be picked up in the old excavations. So we tried to just eliminate it from the sample. But our correlations, well, it says that they increase, but actually that's a mistake. They do not. They decrease. But our correlations decrease when we remove the chips, so we believe that's not the problem probably. So the bias factor uh, maybe is due to some on-site selection. Uh, maybe it's due to some smaller accuracy because there are not special analyses on older sites. So we are not sure now of why this is happening, but we know that there is a bias between modern excavations and older uh, excavations. So other thing that we wanted to compare was because of the nature of the geometric microliths, um, because how this is, it is a function specific <coughs> item and it's less affected by reduction. And we know that it is uh, for the Mesolithic period, it can be a hunting proxy. We wanted to compare it against the lithic volumetric density. In this case, we see that correlation increases too. So uh, this, is giving, uh, this is strengthening uh, this approach. Then we try to do further comparisons with the geometrics, um, because we know that since they are produced after uh, doing blades, we thought that there should have to be an inverse correlation between geometrics and blades. And, but that correlation uh, is not giving significant results, and it's not being uh, and, and, it's, and it's not being as we expected. So we decided to do a new correlation between the geometrics and the blades, not between the volume, but just between the geometrics and the blades. And we see that positive correlation, although with no significant value either. So we probably believe that we have to increase our sample in order to have uh, higher significant values and in order to be able to compare this. So for this uh, method, we have seen that global correlations are indeed obtained uh, we see that some inconsistencies can appear when we go to the specificity of the sites. And we believe that this can be because possible inaccuracy of volumes and lack of control of deposition rates. Um, we believe that this system uh, can achieve its optimal performance when these two factors are controlled. And then we can have a, real, a, a, a better approach on this. So as for the other, as for the other method that we tried, the rationale, the, well, the diversity as expression of functionality. The rationale is because 
A wide range of activities is supposed to be developed in long-term camps. Re regarding non-specific short-term camps, a high lit lithic diversity is expected. This way, we suppose that multifunctional camps would indicate long-term camps. And we applied uh, two diversity indexes, the Shannon Weaver and the Gina Simpson. This is because the, we know the problems of the Shannon Weaver uh, with, uh, with the quality of the sample. So we tried to include the Gina Simpson index, which uh, weights the sample to our predominant classes. So uh, we, because we knew our sample could have some problems regarding the timing of our, of our excavations, that's why we decided to, imply, to, imply, to apply Simpson index. Then we applied also the Jacquard Index to see how the sites really uh, relate between themselves geographically and, uh, and chronologically. We didn't use types for this, but we use classes because um, this is a way one, in one hand, is a way of circumventing the, type, the typology debate, and in the other hand, uh, classes are usually supposed to have similar functions, so we are looking for functionality. So we see that the results here, uh, we see how um, they do not differ significantly between different, the different tests. And we see how the clusters here, they do belong to sites with shelters, and they do belong to sites with similar biotopes. And, and it's consistent with prior knowledge. Uh, Cothina is also in the same range, and it's a very specific case. And also, Benamer and Falguera would need, uh, Falguera is, uh, according to these results, Falguera is a hunting spot. and. Uh, Benami is an opener site, and uh, I think we should also uh, further study that. Then as for the JACA results, we see two clusters, uh, which imply uh, basically all of Cocina, Benami, and Botiqueria 2, uh, two, excuse me. And then we see another cluster, which implies uh, many of the shelters we saw before in the diversity measures analysis. Then the third cluster is just for the same site, for different levels of the same site. So wanting to assess if there was a uh, regional and chronological variability, we see if we check the HD, that's the Shannon and the Simpson index indexes, if we check them, we see that there could be geographical variability. But then if we analyze it uh, farther, then um, we know that, as we said before, these sites were the ones that were showing similar biotopes. And this site, both Athena, is a site with a very different collection with uh, more than 2,000 geometrics, maybe not comparable to the other sites. And uh, this site, the is an open site, the only, one, the only one that we have. So those are two very specific sites. Then if we see the, the Jacka clusters, uh, we see that these sites do relate with Rivotiquiria 2 up here. So that could be indicating that there is, uh, at this point, there wouldn't be geographical or chronological similarity. So, well, about this system, uh, these measures uh, are broadly consistent with prior knowledge. And however, we know that uh, diversity measures can be expressed in things other than functionality, can be expressed in style, style, can be expressed in different things. So we must be aware uh, of this and apply further studies on that. Um, Finally, uh, one of the important things is that the data at our disposal may be insufficient to perform uh, optimal analysis, and uh, that we do not have similarities of sites. Uh, they don't depend on geographical or chronological distributions, and uh, that we are hinting to a logistical mobility model, where we have some camps and some other uh, spot-specific camps. We need more sample. We need a bigger sample. And we definitely need more open-air sites just to see uh, how Ben Amer was behaving and uh, what was happening there. Um, also, diversity measures could be used as that threshold we, we spoke about before, but we need them to be, uh, we, need, we need a bigger sample for that. Um, finally, uh, about the methods, uh, the curiosity versus expediency methods, they offer consistent correlations, but it's not as easy to obtain a reliable sample with the information at our disposal. And about similarity, they offer consistent me measures, and but we must take into we must take into account different uh, interpretations. So that's why we should combine both. About the sample, we said it before, we need a larger reliable sample. And about mobility, we are speaking probably about logistical mobility patterns, and uh, about chronological and geographical variability. Uh, we do not think they have an influence on our results in this case. And about Maastricht, well, the things that we have done is implementing more sites. <coughs> proposing a mobility measure, 
and bringing new lines of research and methodology to the issue. And thank you very much.